the Southern Ute tribe. There was a new girl working. She had just started. She came to my training. She came to me at the first break and she goes, Julie, I can't do this. I'm not native. They're gonna hate me. <laughs> I said, no, you're teaching a course. You're teaching skills. You know, you have other people around you that are native that are supporting you in how to teach this. So you're not just doing it by yourself. She actually has been one of the best trainers I've ever trained. She trained for six years straight, got burnt out, took a year off, went back, and has been training since then. So one of my one of the best trainers I've ever trained. Okay, one thing on this is use creativity and imagination to make SFP appealing to the group. Humor, plays, props, puppets, anything like that. So one example I use, and usually use it later on in the trainings, but one example I use is just introducing yourself. How do you introduce yourself? So I was in White Horse, the Yukon up in uh, Canada, like the one, you go to the Yukon and then you go to like the North Pole, right? So very isolated. One of the youth coordinators came in, he works with the kids, he brought a little hand drum and he started singing. And every kid had to go around and they sang each other's name to the, to the beat of the music. And it was to one of their uh, tribal songs. I loved it. Every kid knew each other. So using things like that is an adaptation. Okay, three pa pathways to protection. So this is the part that I want you to walk away with because I'm going to talk about biological risk factors. So why is this important? Difficult temperament, higher hyperactivity, rapid tempo, uh, decreased verbal IQ, rapid alcohol metabolism. Now, fetal alcohol syndrome is a trait, you know, passed on, not just by genetically passed on, but um, there's, a re there's a reason for that. So some areas in Indian country have a really high fetal alcohol syndrome population. So that, that's kind of a special area. So these risk factors um, is, are, are some of the items we're dealing with within our family. So I come from education and teachers. So what do you what do, what are you taught when you go to class? What? What do they tell you in class? Sit down, be quiet, listen to what I have to say. You guys sit there for what six hours, right? So who who's uh? see anybody. I can't see everybody's feet. People that shake their feet, right, or tap their pencil, or keep moving. That's, that's a, that's a hyperactivity, rapid tempo, right? See, so you're doing it. You're just moving your, your pencil. You got to move, right? We're actually not creatures meant to sit still for six, eight, <coughs> ten hours at a time. We're actually created to move, right? Hunt, gather, eat, find new housing, whatever, right? That's what we're built for. So sitting there for eight hours a day, so you can see why a kid is like wanting to get up and move around and run around. But what do we do to those kids? We give ADD kids medicine. We medicate them. Instead of creating a, a culture where we can get up and move around and be interactive with each other, right? We diagnose them. Oh, you're a problem child. Oh, you got this. Oh, you have a low verbal IQ. Actually, that's what they said about me when I was young. Isn't that interesting? So what do we do about that? What is resiliency? Come on, everybody knows what resiliency is. Oh, by the way, this is my favorite slide. What's resiliency? Ability to bounce back. Okay. How do you do, how do you have that? How do you have I have 13 aunts and uncles. I have a big family. So if you know the so's, people come up, oh, I know you, I go, that's not me. <laughs> that's my sister, that's my aunt, that's not me. So I have a big family. When I was about seven years old, I actually thought about this question. Why is that person doing better than this person? How come they don't seem to have any struggle? Why is it so hard for me to get through this? You ever see a family in your community and they're just doing everything perfect or it looks like they're doing everything perfect? 
you know, the kids are dancers, there's a drummer, they go to all the events, they make jewelry, you know, they're just like doing everything. And then you have another family that's like in jail, dealing with the law, right? How do you get there? How does that happen? I have aunties and I have, I have a sister. She struggles. Her intention is there. She does try to do the right thing and it always seems to just drop out. Why is that? We're sisters raised in the same house at the same time. Okay, I'll give you the answers. So strengthening families actually <coughs> teaches resiliency to the families. We're resilient people, right? That's what we are. So there are seven, well maybe this is my favorite slide. Okay, <laughs> there are seven resiliency characteristics. So the top one is like the regular term for it. The next term in the bold is the native term for things or the American Indian, you know, equivalency. Caring and empathetic is respect. Wise and insightful is wisdom. Happy and optimistic is balance, right? Having a balance is a very important aspect of life. Intelligence, clever, high self-esteem, walking tall, direction, mission, or purpose in life is the right path. Determination and perseverance is a hard worker, right? I'm a hard worker. There is one characteristic that's more important than all of these. Which one is it? Way more, I should say that. It's way more important than, than all of these. Which one is it? Respect. What else? You guys need coffee? I know it was a long afternoon. I know. Nope. <laughs> we'll nope. I think I said he balanced. Hard worker. Hard balance, work. hard worker. Purpose. Purpose. Which one? Determination. Determ determination. Right path. What'd you say? Right path. Oh. Who said that? Somebody else said that. Purpose. Who said purpose? There you go. You get, I don't have a cookie. Oh. <laughs> I'll give you something today. So, why is the right path the most important aspect of any of these? Come on, either. That's right. Let's hear it. Go ahead. So, like the Cheshire Cat, right? It says, if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. Oh, nice. I like that. Well, there's some roads you don't want to get distracted on, right? Like, because it gives you kind of direction. It gives you kind of an idea where you're going. So that way you know what steps to take to get there. Good. Like, you have a vision. You see it. You don't know how to make it happen. I have lots of visions. I want to make a lot of things happen. I see it. I actually have a house that I want to build at some point in my life. I can walk around that house. I, I know what it's going to look like, right? I don't know how I'm going to get there, but it's going to be some day down the road. But that's a direction. That's a mission. That's a purpose in my life. You know, I travel. I do all these things because I know where I'm going. I have found my purpose in life, right? I'm a holy, sacred human being. The Creator gave me, I was born with a gift, and when you find that gift that every person is born with, then you start going down the right path. You ever had a job where you like go and you, oh God, I gotta go to work, right? You're doing everything you can. What time is it? God. I'm gonna be late. I'm sorry, I'm late. I'm not feeling good. Oh God, my boss is a bitch. You ever had a job like that? No? She's laughing. She's never had that job. <laughs> She's a <her> boxer. <laughs> that would be awesome. Okay, have you ever had a job where you jump out of bed? Oh, my presentation is ready. I got handouts. I have everybody's coming. I got, you know, the catering is going to be here. 
and you're up at like six o'clock in the morning, you got a good hair day, you're just like, everything just is going, right? Like I got chill bumps just even talking about it. You're on the right path. You're headed the right direction. You've done your homework. It feels different. It looks different. It lives differently. Now all of these other things are really important. When I'm out of balance, I'm not having such a great day. Respect, if you're lacking respect, kids lack respect, right? Why do they lack respect? They don't see it. These are some of the things that we teach in Strengthening Families. Speaking and listening. Planning and organizing. Problem solving. Able to say no to trouble. Restoring self-esteem. Identifying feelings. Taking criticism. I went to art school, <clears throat> had another life. We called it critiquey. Managing your feelings, coping with anger. Like I, everybody gets angry, right? How do you deal with that? What does that look like? <clears throat> you, I just don't want you to blow up at me. Maybe that's why I'm divorced. No, I'm just, I'll, I'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, not therapy. <laughs> See? It feels like therapy. Okay, same thing here. Stresses the importance of one caring adult, encourages opportunities to help others, increases your social skills for home and away, increases self-discipline, improves communication. Oh, expectation. Oh, this is my this is my other favorite. Expect what do you expect? I expect to go take this trip. I expect to come to the summit. I might have these great expectations and then you're disappointed because it doesn't happen. 